In this lecture, you'll learn about disk shelf numbering and how the shelf IDs work. And I'll also explain the best practice way to configure it. So I've got an example here. I've got two controllers up at the top. And I know it looks like they're two different chassis, but these are actually two different nodes or two different controllers in the same chassis. So they're an HA pair, so they're going to have the high availability connection going between them. Then for our example, let's say that we've got a stack of SATA drives. So these are three individual shelves, and I'm going to have these configured in a stack. So controller one is going to connect to the top shelf in the stack using one of its free SAS ports and we're going to connect to the top shelf in the stack using a SAS cable. The SAS cables are then going to get daisy chained down from the top shelf in the stack to the second shelf and then from second to the third shelf and so on if we had more shelves in our stack. Right now if any of these cables went out or any of the ports, then we would lose connectivity to some or all of our disks. So for our storage system, we always want it to be highly redundant. We don't want to have just that one path. So we're going to use a second SAS port on the back of our controller, and we're going to connect down to the bottom shelf in the stack with that. So that's our MPHA, our multi-path high availability connection, and that gives us two, two paths down to the disk shelves. So if any of the cables of the ports fail, we've still got that other path, we can still get to all of the disks. So in our example, we've got controller one connected to the stack of SATA drives. It's high availability. If controller one fails, we want controller two to be able to take over for it. So controller two also needs to be connected to the stack. So from a task port on the back of controller two, we do the same thing. We connect to the top shelf in the stack and then we daisy chain down SAS cables between the shelves in the stack. And we also have multi-path HA connection going from controller two to the stack as well. Now, for our example, let's say we've got another stack of disk shelves. So I'll take away these cables just to tidy up the diagram. And then let's say we've got a stack of SSD drives as well. Best practice is to have different types of drives in different stacks. So it's a different stack, so it's going to have separate connections using separate ports on the back of our controllers. So with a different spare SAS port on the back of controller one, it's going to connect to the top shelf in the stack, and then we're going to daisy chain the SAS cables going down, and we have our multi-path HA connection going to that second stack as well. And we don't just connect to it from controller one, we're also going to be connected from controller two as well with a multi-path HA connection. And for our example, let's say that we have another couple of stacks, another stack of SATA drives and another stack of SSD drives. The reason that we would do this is that let's say that the first stack of SATA drives and SSD drives are owned by controller one, meaning that whenever traffic is going down to those disks, it's always going to go from the SAS connections on controller one. Controller two is there as a high availability backup. And for the second SATA and SSD drives, we'll say that they're owned by controller two with controller one as its backup. I'll talk about ownership more in the next lecture. Okay, so that's how our stacks are going to physically look. Now let's talk about how the numbering works for them because the controllers need to be able to identify the disks that they're going to be talking to. So with our numbering, each of our shelves has a shelf ID. You can see in the picture here, I've got a shelf and the shelf ID is going to be shown over here on the left and you can set the shelf ID on each of your shelves. With the numbering, you can have up to 10 shelves in a stack. That depends on the hardware types that you've got and there's also recommendations as well. I'll talk about the recommendations and best practices in the last lecture in this section. I'll summarize it all there. 
Best practice is not to mix media types in the same stack. That's why in the example in the previous slide, I used separate stacks for our SATA and our SSD drives. The SAS shelves must have unique IDs within an HA pair. So each of the shelves has got a number on there and within an HA pair, all of the shelves must have a unique number. The numbering starts at number zero. And if the chassis has internal disks, they're assigned shelf ID zero. Again, looking back at the hardware section that we had earlier, I told you about all of the different models of platform that were available. And you saw that some of them came with internal drives in the chassis and some of them did not. If you're using a chassis model that does have internal drives, then ID zero is assigned for the internal drives. And different HA pairs in a multi-node cluster can reuse the same shelf ID numbers. That might not be clear yet, so don't worry. I'm going to give you an example later on in this lecture where I'm going to explain exactly what that means. It's recommended to assign a shelf ID ending in zero to the first shelf in each stack. For example, your, your first stack the top shelf in the stack, you could give it number zero. And then in your next stack, the top shelf in that stack would begin with number 10. The next stack would begin with number 20 and then 30 and so on. If the chassis has internal drives, then those internal drives, the chassis itself is always assigned ID zero. So for your first stack, zero is already taken, it would start with number one, but then the next stack, we would have the normal numbering plan of 10 and then 20 and then 30 and so on. So this is what not to do because you can add additional shelves to a stack later on. You don't have to start with a fully populated stack. So in our example here, we've got a couple of stacks. We've got a stack of SATA drives and a stack of SSDs, and we've got four shelves in each stack right now. So you could be tempted to do this, or start the numbering say at 10, and then 11, 12, and 13 for the SATA stack, and then just carry on with the numbering at 14, 15, 16, and 17 for the SSD drives. But the reason you don't want to do that is that you might add additional shelves to the stack later on, like this, and then when that happens, because you already started off by using 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, spread over the two stacks, when you do add new shelves, they're now going to be numbered 18, 19, 20, 21 on the SATA side, 22, 23, 24, 25 on the SSD side. And if you look at the SATA stack, it goes 10, 11, 12, 13, 18, 19, 20, 21. So it's not contiguous numbering it's not logical and this can make things confusing and make it more difficult for troubleshooting later. So you wanna make sure that you're always gonna be using contiguous numbering. And the way that you would do that is exactly the same example again with four shelves in each stack. You start off with zero, one, two, and three, and then 10, 11, 12, 13 on the second stack. And then that way, when you do add additional shelves, you can have the numbering still contiguous. So now we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on our, SAS, on our SAS side and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 on the SSDs. So now everything is logical and contiguous. Okay, let's look at an example of what we would do going back to the diagram at the start again. So here I have got my four stacks. The way I would do my numbering is it would be 0, 1, 2 on the SATA drives here, then 10, 11, 12 on the first stack of SSDs, then 20, 21, 22, and then 30, 31, 32. If the chassis had internal drives, then the chassis itself would be ID 0, and then on the first stack, I would have 1, 2, 3, and then the second stack would be the same as before, 10, 11, 12, then 20, 21, 22, 30, 31, 32. Okay, the other thing to tell you here is about when we've got a cluster with more than two controllers, two nodes in there. So let's say that we have got a four node cluster. Well, on this first HA pair, controller one, controller two, we would do the numbering like I just described. Starting zero, then 10, then 20, then 30. 
and every one of the shelves that is assigned to this HA pair must have a unique ID. But we can reuse the same numbering plan for controllers three and four. So let's say now in the same cluster, we've got controllers three and four. Well, we can use the same numbering there. So we could have 0, 1, 2, 10, 11, 12, 20, 21, 22, and 30, 31, and 32 again. Because those shelves are connected to a different HA pair, it's okay to have the same numbers that were used on another HA pair because it's only the two controllers that are connected to those shelves. Okay, so that's how the numbering works for our disk shelves. Let's also cover the naming convention for our disks as well. Because the controllers are going to be reading and writing data to those individual disks, it needs a way to identify them individually. And the way it works is the naming convention is the stack ID and then a dot and then the shelf ID and then a dot and then the bay number. So for our example here, if this was in stack ID one and the shelf ID is zero and the bay here is 23, when we were in system manager or the command line viewing information there and we saw information about that disk, that disk would be identified as 1.0.23. If it was this disk here in the bay next door, obviously that would be 1.0.22. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.